me again and today I am at the Garland Road thrift store which is in Garland Texas I'm gonna show you today how to do a $20 thrift store challenge to put together a entire vintage look for under $20 and the vintage look that I'm going to be putting together will be entirely 40s inspired People are staring at me while I'm making this. <laughs> okay. Anyways, I'm going to be putting together a whole 40s inspired outfit with $20 or less. So, fingers crossed, and I'm going in. When I first walk into the store, the shoes just so happen to be directly on my right, and I can't help but take a look even though I do not need any more shoes. Typically what I look for when I go and look at shoes are shoes that have a 1940s look to them. So maybe with a chunky heel, some straps around the ankles. Oh, actually just like these shoes right here. Oh, these are coming home with me. Unfortunately, when I go into places like this, it's usually pretty hard to find the type of shoe that I like in my size and in the style I like and even more rare to find an actual pair of vintage shoes. Speaking of vintage shoes, here's a pair of heels right here from the 1960s. I easily would have picked up these shoes had it not been for the very narrow heel in the back as I usually look for more of a chunky heel, but it does have a very nice vintage inspired applique around the shoe itself and they happen to be by the same brand as the red shoes I picked up, Chinese Laundry. These are a nice pair of faux leather heels by Jessica Simpson, and they have the look that I'm going for, minus the very thin heel in the back, so it's gonna be a pass for me. If you are a rockabilly or a pinup lover, then these are probably the shoes for you. Now these heels aren't so bad, though I am a little picky about my peep toe. These are just a bit too wide for me. I prefer mine to be a little more narrow. And the heel isn't so bad, but it is a little beat up, so I'm gonna have to pass. Don't ask me who dresses the mannequins here. Now this would be a very cute coat for spring with the pastel pink color and it has a nice vintage inspired belted back style, but I do not need any more coats. Now this coat is vintage inspired for obvious reasons, considering there is fur on the collar and the cuffs and it really is beautiful, but I just don't need a coat right now. White color tags and for not quality items marked with the letter W. It is also senior gift foundation that's 55 years or older with a valid ID. I just love the floral rayon fabric of this set, but I do not like the set itself. So unfortunately, that's going to be a no. Looking for a true vintage suit at a thrift store is like looking for a needle in a haystack, especially when you're trying to find something pre-1960.
I would have instantly picked up this suit had it been my size. It's a great 1940s inspired summer suit with its wide shoulders, pointed lapels, and buttons that look like mother of pearl. This suit usually isn't the type of style that I go for, but I love the material because it reminds me of 1950s Lillian suits that are made with a silk blend. And finally, a true vintage suit. Though this one is from the 1960s, I can still appreciate it. It has gorgeous buttons, a nice silk lining, and a very fun, colorful material. Before I end up falling in love with a dress too much, I like to see what it's made of first. If it falls into the category of rayon, silk, or cotton, or some other blend like that, then it sits a little higher on my scale. Though the fabric of this dress is a little on the gaudy side, I think I kinda like it. Plus, it has shoulder pads, so it already gives into a 1940 style look. And I also love that it has a built-in cotton lining because it reminds me of 1930s dresses that I actually own. If this floral H&M dress had been my size, it would have definitely gone home with me. I am in love with this dress and I already know, based off of feeling it alone, that it's definitely silk. I can't really tell from looking at the tag alone because it doesn't say there, so we are going to have a look underneath. If all else fails, always look in the seam inside the dress to see what the fabric content is. And so far, this dress is looking really good. While this dress from American Eagle is very adorable, and I've bought some vintage inspired pieces from them before, the neckline is just a little off for me, so I don't know if I like that too much. It is made of a rayon fabric, which is great, has a side zipper, which is authentic to the 30s and 40s style dresses, and it has sleeves that kind of flare out at the top and lay nicely on the shoulder. It's just a little too big for me, so I'm gonna pass. While this dress may not look authentic, it reminds me of the dresses by the brand Stop Staring, known for their figure-hugging dresses, so I'm going to make an exception for this one. While the old me would have usually picked up this skirt because it's high-waisted and has buttons on both sides and it's hot pink, I just have so many of these skirts now and they hug you just a little bit too tight and I think I have too much of that. And now of course I like this skirt because it has a very gaudy print. It has a belt buckle that actually looks art deco and it is made of cotton so I think I will definitely get it. Now I thought this skirt was just very beautiful. It's silk chiffon and it features many different seams depicted on it. And of course I would have instantly bought it had it been my size. I have been looking everywhere for a black wool skirt for the longest time now, so I'm definitely getting this. I swear by black skirts in a vintage inspired wardrobe, they are an essential. This skirt would have been perfect if it did not have an elastic waist. Skirts with pleats that fall just a few inches below the waist are perfect for achieving that 1940s look. So this is coming home with me.
I was very upset to find that this jacket was not my size. It would have been perfect for creating a 1940s color block look. Okay, you have one chance to guess what movie this jacket reminds you of. I said I was going to do a $20 thrift store challenge earlier, and I did spend $20 on everything that I wanted to get to create a vintage inspired outfit. But I went over my budget by buying a pair of shoes, you know, it happens. So I spent $25 is what I'm trying to say. So let's just forget about the pair of shoes and move on to the clothing that I found. You will find that all the clothing that I found did not necessarily come together as an outfit, but many individual pieces that I can turn into vintage inspired outfits. So what I would like to do now, which was not originally intended, is create a, I guess a little fashion show with everything I got and show you how I would style each piece and how much I spent on it and just, you know, some basic whys of why I got each item I did and how they are vintage inspired. So I will show you. So first up, we have this Mod B dress, which is hot pink and figure hugging, just like dresses by Stop Staring. I do have it more 50 styled with my great grandmother's swing jacket, which is from the 50s. I have it styled along with a late 1940s hat some black 1950s gloves, a black 1950s patent leather belt, and not seen in the video are black patent leather platform heels. And I scored this dress for $3.98. This next look is a little more casual for me. This skirt is by Odell, which is originally from Anthropology. I have it paired with a 1940s navy blue leather purse, which my mom actually bought for me. Kudos to her for always knowing what to find for me. The skirt came out to the tremendous total of 99 cents. To complement the skirt, I paired a 1940s inspired cardigan with it, with an authentic 1940s nylon blouse underneath. My favorite part about the skirt itself was the attached belt buckle, which looks very similar to Art Deco style belt buckles. Worn with the skirt are these 1940s navy blue red cross heels. Next we have this beige jacket that is by Valerie Stevens that I have worn as a swing coat which is not made to be worn as a swing coat. It really is a blazer that is a few sizes bigger than what I would wear that I have worn loosely over the outfit. It has shoulder pads and a few buttons at the top and I have the sleeves cuffed up to give it the style of a 1940 swing jacket. The jacket came out to $2.98. Worn with this jacket, I have the satin skirt that I also bought at the thrift store, which is by Down East Basics, and I paid $1.98 for it. What I like to do when a jacket or a coat allows for it, I like to add a large brooch to the lapel. The reason I like the skirt so much is because it has a grosgrain ribbon at the waist, which would have been an authentic material used in the 1940s, and it has pleats that fall just a few inches below the waist, which also gives it an authentic look. Worn with this outfit, I do have an authentic 1940s hat with a purse that isn't so matching, but it still has the color scheme to match the outfit. The shoes worn with this outfit are 1940s brown and white spectators. 
Up next, we have this black wool skirt that has a straight fit to it. I have it paired with a 1940s suit jacket, and it came out to a total of $2.98. Worn with it is the same white blouse from the previous look. It is very important to have a white blouse in your vintage-inspired wardrobe. What I would suggest when looking for a 1940s inspired blouse is finding one that has a pointed collar and cuffs that are fitted around your wrists. This outfit would be ideal if you're shooting for more of a business professional look while trying to tie in your vintage style with your workwear. Paired with this look are some 1940s inspired sunglasses and a vintage bag by the brand Corée. Up next is this black and gray floral dress by ECI that is 1930s and 40s inspired. It came out to a total of $4.98. Paired with this dress, I have a 1930s or 40s evening bag that is entirely beaded. And I have a 1930s yellow silk velvet belt worn around the waist to give it a contrasting effect against the black and the gray. Then I also have a very long pearl necklace, and let's just all ignore how it's laying on my chest. What I love most about this dress is that it's not only silk, but it is also bias cut. Bias cut is when the fabric is cut diagonally across the grain, allowing for more of a stretch and a better fit when you put on a garment. This was done a lot in the 1930s, and you will see a lot of the evening gowns back then that were worn on celebrities, how they fit and hug the body beautifully. And lastly, we have this 1990s does 1940s long black and pink floral dress. It came out to a total of $3.98. The reason this dress can pull off a 1940s look so well is because it is made of 100% rayon. Rayon was a very commonly used fabric in the 1940s as it was a synthetic that was invented to take the place of silk and it was also less expensive. Paired with this outfit is a 1940s wide brim hat, 1930s dress clips, a 1940s hand painted flower necklace, and a 1940s cord clutch.